Hi, I'm Marius from Mways Photography, and it's been a while since I've shot a vlog like this. So I want to update everyone as to what I've been busy with, except now for my work and stuff like that. Um, for instance, my camera upgrade, why I decided to buy a mirrorless system. And then also um, what I want to do with the show further, what I want to bring into the show, more reviews. I just want to discuss that. Maybe you guys can give me some feedback down in, 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 in the comment section as to what you think of everything I decided to do. Okay, so the first thing is, why did I buy a new camera system? Okay, I was doing most of my work on my Nikon SLR camera. Um, I'm shooting all these episodes, like for instance, the camera that's recording this is also the same as this, a Nikon D7000. I'm shooting my video on here. Um, I'm doing my weddings and everything I can do on my SLR system. But there was some stuff that bothered me. Um, for instance, the focusing. If I'm using a wide open aperture lens, like for instance, a 1.8, or 1.4 or 2.8 lens, I really want to use that wide open aperture. The problem is the pictures aren't always very sharp and the camera likes to back and front focus sometimes, so it's really painful. Now I'm shooting something, uh, maybe it's a wedding on the beach, it's sunny, you can't see anything on the back of the screen. So you don't want to sit there and look unprofessional by uh, what I usually do is I use this um, that camera's recording has got a bracket at the back and there's magnets on here so this clips into place at the back and then I can look at the image and this also magnifies a little bit so it zooms the image closer so then I can usually quickly just test for that very crucial shot that I've got very shallow depth of field and others my aperture is wide open um, I just want to make sure those shot, shots are and shop because the camera tells you hey man I'm focused I'm in focus shoot 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 and when, later when you get home um, the ocean behind them is in focus and then they are slightly blurry not totally blurry but you can see the camera focus just behind them. so that's something that really bothered me um, so what's nice about the mirrorless system um, except now for size and everything I'll talk about now is that you can immediately see what you are taking a picture of now why that happens is um, with your SLR camera. Let's first just talk about that. If I look through the viewfinder here, there's a mirror on the inside and I can see what my lens is seeing. So you can't see what the picture is going to look like, but you can see what your lens sees. Now that's awesome. And I've always loved shooting like that. But if you're shooting in very harsh weather conditions, you need to make sure you know what you're doing because otherwise you're going to over and under expose and your shots aren't going to be that great. The nice thing about the mirrorless, now I bought two of these Fuji X-T1s. Um, first is the size, but I'm gonna to get to it a little bit later. Inside here is a beautiful viewfinder. Now I'm going to shoot in the next month, maybe even sooner, I'll do a proper in-depth review on this camera, like all my review videos. Um, but when you look in here, that's the first wow you get. When you turn it on and you look in there, You've got this massive big screen that shows you what you are seeing. So the nice thing is if I'm, for instance, using the exposure compensation button here at the top and I over and under expose, you can see it over and under expose. If I'm changing the aperture here on the lens, you can see the image as you're changing it. So you're seeing what your end result will look like. So if you're in a tricky lighting situation, you're not guessing, am I getting it right? I know I should do that because that will happen. I don't need to worry about it because I can see it happen in my screen. The focus thing is pin, pin, pin sharp. It's crazy. Um, I got one of these with a bunch of lenses from Fuji South Africa to, to just test out and just to see what I think about it. Um, I gave them the body and the lenses back after two days and said, okay, give me that and that and that and I bought it immediately. Now, one of the things that changed my mind was I printed a sample like this um, now this is Lumen, my Dashund, and this now looks terrible on there. I don't expect you to see from this because the pictures might even look similar to you now, but I'm going to show you an overlay. So if you look at the screen now, the first shot is the one on the Nikon D7000 with a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Now I'm shooting at 1.8 and if I look at my settings I printed on this thing I was using ISO 100 and a shutter speed of 200. Now, if you look at those eyes, those eyes really aren't pin sharp. And um, sometimes you take a few to get it to go sharp because the camera's just not always that sharp with the SLR camera. 
and then I took the exact same shot. Now also these pictures were not photoshopped at all. They are straight from the camera, um, shot in JPEG, no editing done to them. This is the Fuji X-T1 and I've, I'm using the 56 millimeter, yeah, the 56 millimeter 1.2 lens. Now on this one I'm shooting it wide open 1.2. Look at that color, look at that depth of field. Those eyes are pin pin sharp. So this is the test I did when I got those bodies or that body with the lenses and it's like, <clears throat> I like this, okay, this I can use. So I tested that and I played around with some other settings and stuff over those two days and like I was really impressed, especially I can see what I'm doing. Um, one of the things I'm not that crazy about, they don't have proper flashes yet. They've got, um, it's basically a, Brand, uh, rebranded, re I think is the word. It's a Sunpack flash, and they just put the Fujifilm logo on there. Not that crazy about this flash. It works, it does a trick, uh, just not that happy about it. Um, the other important thing that I love about the system is it's so easy to use. Um, I actually don't want to do like a review because it feels like I'm doing a review now. <laughs> the shutter speed is here at the top. Now, there is no mode dial on this camera. There is no shutter aperture and, and manual and program. You don't have that on the camera. There is no mode dial. So it's, it's, it's a lot like shooting film. So on the lens, you've got your aperturing. So this is now changing the aperture. I'm in aperture priority. Because my shutter speed at the top, I've put on A for auto. So my shutter speed, the camera must decide by itself. And the aperture, I can now control. If I turn the aperture to A, now it's on A. Now I'm telling the camera the aperture must automatically be set the shutter must automatically be set. So what's the camera doing? It's in auto mode. So, and I can also change the, the ISO here at the top and it's also auto there. And then when you start to set all of them, obviously you're in manual mode. So it's really quick. And the, the really great thing about this is it's super, super light. If I pick up my two bags, my SLR bag is like, and this bag is like, it's very light. So especially for doing 10, 12 hour weddings and stuff or, or on location full day things, this will really be a breeze. Um, I've stumbled over some problems where I really had to think very quickly to get um, the camera to focus properly because there is no mirror. You're looking at a screen on the inside and there was, it was a party, it was pitch black dark with strobe lights and smoke machine and everything in that building. Getting the focus, this lens saved my ass. That's the word I want to use because this lens, 1.4 lens, I could see a lot of light. I opened up wide and I could see more. Shooting high ISO, those pictures came out beautifully. Um, I even impressed the clients, um, I've done it twice now already, where you just press the Wi-Fi button, you press Wi-Fi on your, on your phone and you send the pictures straight, quick. It doesn't, um, it didn't give me any problems. And then um, literally like 10 minutes after the shoot, I'm sending it via WhatsApp or the email quickly. Oh, by the way, here's some sneak peeks for you uh, right there on the day. So I'm not going home, taking it off, putting it on my PC, editing, resizing. The colors in this thing is beautiful. So yeah, you can obviously figure out, I'm very excited about this camera. Okay, another thing is this, like I talked about was the size. So this is the 55-200 lens. If I compare this to my SLR lens, this thing is much lighter. One thing that I didn't like about it, or I don't like about it at all, is this very terrible um, strap they've got on here. This is one of my, one of the things I don't like about it. There's so much pluses, and not that many minuses at this time, but this thing, it really hurts my neck here. So because it's so thin, um, I've already have so I already have someone making me leather straps um, that will have my branding on and everything. It's nice and thick that will come on here with nice clips. I can take it on and off if I need to. But yeah, this needs to go. Okay, so yeah, I'm excited. I love the, love the camera, um, and I really want to bring that into the episodes as well. That's also why I'm making this vlog to tell everyone where the show is heading. Now, the, these cameras really set me back quite a lot and I had to sell a bunch of stuff to pay most of it. So I sold the SX60 HS, so please don't cry. <laughs> okay, I sold that. 
I sold the Nikon D3001 I also used in the episodes. I sold an old and SL, older SLR camera as well and a whole bunch of gadgets and stuff that I don't really use that much anymore. And I've actually still selling a few stuff to pay most of it. So I'm, I'll still have a little bit of a minus I still need to pay. But these cameras I want to now start a new, um, what's the word? Uh, a new dimension to my photography, bring in some new fresh creative juices by the things I can now do. Having Wi-Fi on me all the time, having um, the ability to see my picture as I'm building it. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. Now, the current season I'm still shooting of, of DPT. Uh, and we're, we're, I think we're now just over half. Yeah, we're just over half. No, we're in the half, we're in the middle of the season. So I think there's another seven episodes, I think. So um, the next episode I basically just shot, I just finished it like 30 minutes ago, is the workflow video. So the workflow video is going to come in the next few days, as well as um, the off-camera flash, which is really awesome. And then the rest of the videos that I'll be shooting, obviously I won't be using the Canon PowerShot, but remember, it's still just a camera. If you've got mirrorless, if you've got an SLR camera, if you've got a bridge camera, it really doesn't matter what you've got. You've still got shutter speed, you've still got aperture, you've still got either, you've still got the exposure triangle. It's still a camera. So in the next couple of episodes, when I do off-camera flash, when I do time-lapse, all the stuff I'm still going to do, tabletop photography, all that, I'll be using mostly the Nikon um, D7000 that I'll be using as my example camera to do everything with. Okay, then when this season is done, I want to start also a mirrorless um, series of videos. Again, if I bring anything into those videos, remember it's still photography. I will just focus a lot more on this camera because this camera has got so many features, it's crazy. Well, not features, settings. And that's something that I really enjoy about it. Um, if you do not know what the settings are and how to set them, you can really quickly mess up all your pictures. So I've gone over most of the settings. I've played with most of them and I can see where the weak points are, where the good points are. So I want to cover a lot of those in the episodes to come. So I will have most probably a, a, a DPT mirrorless season. That's going to be more for the mirrorless cameras, but you can still get information from it, from what I'll be doing in the episodes. Okay, then I also want to do more reviews. Um, like for instance, um, Lightpix Labs in Hong Kong sent me these flash cue um, triggers. Now, this, these are for off-camera flash. I'll talk about them most probably in the off-camera flash episode I still need to record. Um, these things are so tiny, they will fit on top of the mirrorless camera and they will basically just sit there compared to the, my larger wireless triggers. So I want to review this because they sent me these to test drive and I want to do more reviews like that to show you what you can get because these are obviously more affordable than the larger pocket wizards and stuff like that and really fun to play around with. So I want to do a lot more reviews, more mirrorless kind of stuff and then also in the comment section give me some ideas as well. You guys are thinking of stuff that I didn't even think about. Um, uh, one of my comments I got yesterday from Graham, I think it's Graham, on the Facebook group. He said, what about some ideas for us photographers who are disabled? I never thought about it. So I replied in the comment and I said, well, why not send me some suggestions via email? Because I don't know what to do, but give me some ideas and I can work with it. And then eventually I can bring in some extra episodes and shows and stuff. We'll see where it goes. Okay, that about covers what I wanted to say about the cameras and the stuff I sold and all that. Then just something I want to get off my chest because it's something that sometimes makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. If you're not on the Digital Photography Today Facebook group, you won't most probably know about it. But on the group, I have sometimes told people there, okay, here's these episodes of the Photoshop titles. It's on sale. Go to the store. Um, here is the donation button. If you enjoy the episodes, go make a donation. And it, I don't want to so sound like I'm asking for handouts or anything. So it makes me feel a bit awkward and a bit weird. So I usually just tell people it's there and then other people in the forum will, or not on the forum, in the, in the group will tell them, well, I've gained this, this, this from my support team, boom, go. And most of the time, those are the people who actually made the donations and the other people just don't stay quiet. Okay, so what I want to get off my chest is why I ask for donations. 
Now, like you guys, I also have my nine to five. Now, my nine to five is actually more nine to nine or sometimes longer or sometimes earlier because I work for myself. So I need to do all my own admin. I like to do my own thing. I don't have anyone do anything for me. I don't have someone who sits around and, do my, and does my admin for me or someone who organizes a shoot for me and packs my bags for me. I like to do, I'm a control freak. Okay, so I do my own thing. And obviously I've got my photography. I do some video stuff. Um, I do designing and printing and all kinds of stuff. And that brings in my finances I need to pay the bills. I've also got electricity, I've also got internet, I've also got food, I've, we're also paying a bond. We've got the same expenses, Nanette and I, that you guys have yourself. So what I've been doing here locally before I even started with YouTube is I had my photography courses and people come here, I love to teach. So I have a group of four people, they'll sit here, I've got chairs and everything and we discuss the camera settings and I go over each of the people or each of the person's cameras and we go for everything then we go out we take pictures and I teach them shutter aperture everything like I show you guys on the videos and they paid me for it and obviously that helps to pay my camera gear and my bills and everything now I also go to photography clubs sometimes and I'll do um, presentations on Photoshop or something else like lighting um, because I love to teach so I thought okay cool why not get a YouTube channel there and for the first part I didn't even monetize my videos because I loved to put the content out there. I didn't even think about monetizing it. I thought, okay, cool. Um, I'm putting everything there, might as well. Added the monetization option. And people somehow think that when you've got your videos monetized, you are making big gazillion bucks. If you've got a million views, um, so basically if you're running and you scare people and you get millions of views on that video, you make money from it. Um, if you shoot a video like this and you can go have a look at, at the amount of statistics on my on my views It's not hundreds of thousands of views. It's a few thousand So the money they pay you for the video is really nothing So if you take into account how much time I spent recording it um, Recording the extra audio syncing it making sure the sound is good trying my best to deliver to everyone who watch around the world, the best product that I can get there so people can learn and become better photographers. Um, I wish I could do it for free. I wish that I was a millionaire because then I'll probably still teach people because I love to teach. But then I didn't have to worry about all those extra bills that need to be paid and the extra gear and the stuff that needs to be replaced all the time. So that's why I told on the, or I sometimes have on the episodes, if you love the show, share the love and go donate. So you might think, oh, $5, $10. Remember, if a lot of people donate $5 or $10 or $20, it soon becomes a lot. Now, from basically, if you take 1,000 people, 99% of those people will not donate. They will just watch the videos because it's free. Um, that's just the way people are these days. Um, if you want to learn something, go online. Go watch a free video. Um, go to a group, or not a group, uh, a blog, and go read up on it. Free information, awesome, no problem. So people don't necessarily pay for something anymore. Um, 20 years ago, if you wanted to learn photography, you had to go to a college, you had to go to uh, maybe a distant learning place or somewhere, and you had to pay for all the knowledge you get. And like I said, I'm not in it just to make money from it, but what I'm trying to say is that I also have bills. When I go to Wikipedia and they've got something that I wanna read up on, it has happened once or twice where a thing popped up at the top and says, we need money. Now, I love to use Wikipedia and I use it a lot. So when that thing popped up at the top, I said, okay, cool. I, I get lots of information from Wikipedia. Boom, I made my donation, sent it on its way. A few months later or a year later, I can't really remember, same message, reply, boom, send it on its way because I'm getting something from Wikipedia. So I have no problem in sending something, something their way. 99% um, of people don't do that. So, and what do people think? Oh, I'm not gonna worry about it, someone else will do it. Well, guess what? The other people also think exactly the same thing. So, yeah, I don't, re like, I don't really wanna talk about it again. I just wanna get it off my chest because people don't necessarily know. Because I'm experiencing this, I've, when, I, when someone asks me for a donation on something, I don't hesitate anymore because I'm in the same situation. You tell people that, they get all this information and everything and, okay, cool, take, 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 never give. So I don't wanna sound um, terrible here, but um, thanks to all the people who have contributed. 
who have bought something on my website, who have made a donation. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. And I just want to continue shooting these awesome episodes as long as I can. But it takes time. I'm doing everything myself. I'm shooting everything myself. I'm planning everything. I'm editing everything. I'm uploading everything. So if it takes too much out of my time, eventually I will have to make the videos shorter or not shorter, um, less so that I can get to everything I need to do. So yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest. And then I'll see you guys next week for the camera workflow, which will be really exciting, um, where we discuss everything from when you take your pictures until you have your end result. I'll talk about all the um, important stuff. Um, lots of tips like how to back up your files, um, how to um, store your images, how, how to have a filing system so that you know where all your pictures are. So we're going to talk about all that in next week's episode. See you guys then. Bye.